dissected a frog and removed all the internal organs except for the kidney, lungs, and heart. After we dissected the organs, we inserted a catheter into the aorta and perfused a perfusate through the system. In this experiment, three different equations will be used. The first of which is the resistance equation in Ohm's law. In the Ohm's law equation, the other equation used in this experiment was the Starling's law hypothesis. Okay, that's enough, Lorna. Let's watch some TV now. This is the true story <laughs> of seven strangers living in a The real world. What magnesium doesn't know is that I've been interacting with her man, Count Modulin. I enter the calcium channel and we cause such great contraction. <laughs> Count Modulin, my man. What's up, calcium? Now you're activated. Let's do what we do best. Word. We're gonna cause a contraction. You're activated now. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I know that calcium's been going through that calcium channel to interact with my man Calmodulin. I'm gonna block her from going through that channel so she can't interact with him anymore. Oh no you don't, Calcium, you're not going through that channel. I know you've been interacting with my man Calmodulin. What are you gonna do about it, huh? Ever since magnesium blocked me from the calcium channel, I can't see my man cow modulin anymore. I'm so sad. That's right, I blocked you from the channel. I hate you! Oh, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, break it up. Come on, baby, she don't mean nothing to me. Don't worry about her. Come on, let's just go. Forget about her. Come on. Ever since magnesium started blocking calcium from getting through that calcium channel, there has been such an increase in hydrostatic pressure in the smooth muscle house, and the weight has totally increased. Yeah, and also, the resistance in this house has decreased and the flow rate totally increased. Oh my gosh, those two, I can't believe them. All for cow modulin? <sighs> I just don't like her. I like them. I like them both. Oh my god, white drama queens. I know, that was <sighs> so stupid. Dude. And that, that calcium, what a be- <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey. That's what those cows for now. Let's change the channel. Dude, that guy was so cool. Let's go! Alright folks, today we're in the innards of a wild American bullfrog. Gonna check out the interactions between cyclooxygenase and arachidonic acid. Let's take a look, shall we? Folks, wasn't that amazing? The arachidonic acid's interaction with cyclooxygenase created a PGI2. What this prostaglandin does is it causes a vasodilation increase in the capillary hydrostatic pressure. What will happen is this frog's going to float up with a bunch of weight. Also, the dilation also causes a decrease in resistance, thus making the drip rate of the frog increase. Wow, that was awesome. Part 2 of Crocodile Hunter will return after these short messages. acid can affect the smooth muscle is through the binding of PGI2 with the IP receptor. When this class of prostaglandin binds onto the IP receptor, the trimeric GS protein is then activated. Once activated, the beta and gamma subunit dissociates. <coughs> the active G alpha S protein can then activate adenylic cyclase, which then produces cyclic AMP using ATP. The cyclic AMP can then activate protein kinase A, PKA. The production of PKA leads to the inactivation of MLCK myosin-like chain kinase and the act activation of MLCP myosin-like chain phosphatase. Increasing the MLCP activity promotes the dephosphorylation of myosin heads. Decreasing the activity of MLCK prevents the phosphorylation of myosin heads. 
The pKa can also activate potassium channels, which leads to an influx of potassium into the cell. The increased potassium concentration causes a decrease in membrane potential, making the depolarization of smooth muscle more difficult. The combined effects of decreased myosin ATPase activity and the increased potassium concentration within the cell leads to a weaker contraction. This overall causes vasodilation. Let's go! Oh crikey! Cyclooxygenase says natural predator aspirin has just come around. Oh my gosh, I think it's gonna give my pretty bad headache. Love of mine, someday you will die, but I'll be close behind. I'll follow you into the dark. Oh crikey! Because of aspirin's interference, arachidonic acid will no longer be able to be transformed into PGI2. Thus, the capillary hydrostatic pressure won't increase, and neither will the drip rate. Oh, this is a terrible, terrible tragedy. <laughs>